front to public victory. So this is a, um, a little uh, exercise here. And uh, I'm gonna ask two people that can go into annotate mode and maybe play a little game of uh, extreme tic-tac-toe. So tic-tac-toe only has what, nine squares. This has, uh, so let's see, 12 times uh, or four, 16 squares. So the idea here though, same as in tic-tac-toe, you gotta get three in a row. So I'm gonna kind of look down here and ask to get sort of two players here. So how about uh, Alex and Lucas? Can you guys uh, play tic-tac-toe for us? Yeah, of course. All right. So Lucas, can you uh, can you go ahead and put a mark on the screen just so we can kind of see how things sort of start out? Do you know how to do the annotate function on on Zoom? Can you can you make a mark on the screen somehow? Alex, I'm gonna, there you go. So Lucas, that was a mark. Good. So so Lucas, do you want to be since you're first one on here? Do you want to be X's or O's? I'll be X's. All right, you're gonna be X's. So that's an easier mark to make. Alex, are you there? Are you with us? I'm gonna ask uh, Jack. Jack, can you play tic-tac-toe with us? Or at least play tic-tac-toe with Lucas? Yeah, sure. All right, do you, do you know how to do annotation? You got the um, hard thing, you gotta do zero, you gotta do O's. So tic-tac-toe, the, the object is to get three in a row. Either three in a row, Sideways, okay. upside down or backwards here. Go ahead. There we go, Jack's first move. Lucas. Sweet. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're trying to get as many in a row as we can. And Jack, there we go. You good? All right, Jack. There we go. Oh. Trying to get three in a row, as many three in a row as we can. All right. There we go. Let's see what's uh, going on here. We got an O. There we go. Oh, <laughs> the O's are getting better looking, Jack. That's good. Let's go. Uh, let's get another X on here, Lucas. All right, go. You know. There's a way that there's a, there's a way to do it. I forgot. I haven't played in yeah, a while. I don't remember either. <laughs> but that's a, this is a kids game. You guys should be good at this by now. There we go. So we're going for three in a row. Nothing yet. As many trees in a row as we can get. Oh, baby. All right. All right. There's three in a row. What's um, next? This is, my, this is my O here. There we go. Oh. Oh, man. Now you're winning. <laughs> You also have three. I don't know if you noticed. Oh, uh, wait. And then I have a three right here, I think. Hey, uh, okay. And, and you could have all, you could have gotten four. Uh, there. <laughs> all right. So there we go. Let's give these guys a hand. I'll give you a little guys a hand. Stay on, stay on with me. We're going to talk about this a little bit. So the objective was to get um, three in a row. And it looks like we got, um, we got one with these X's along here, and then one with the O's along here. So we got two, two, three in a rows. So Lucas and Jack, is there is there a way you can get more three in a rows? Is there any way you can get more three in a rows? I know there's a way to do it so that no matter what the other person fills in, you have two choices, two ways to go, and then. You can always, yeah, there, there is, it's like the L you have to do somehow, you know, mm -hmm. the. Yeah, I remember that. I don't remember okay. how to do it though. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, thank you guys for this point. I'm going to go ahead and show you, you know, how you can get, um, you can get more than three in a row. So let me see if I got my annotate on here. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to say, here's how you can get more than three in a row. So I don't know somebody who's who's a good sort of math major. Tell me, tell me how many uh, how many in a row is that? 
16. 16 in a row. Might even be more if you count diagonals and things like that, right? See you more. You want you want some more? I'll show you how to get some more, right? So now if, if, if the first one was 16, now we got like, you know, 32. And if I start putting more O's and everything like this, you know, we could get, we can get a pretty significant number of a row. So this is an example, and we use this little illustration. I'm sorry I couldn't get everybody to play tic-tac-toe and thank you to Lucas and Jack for helping with that little example. But the idea is, is we're trying to get as many wins as we can. If the goal is to maximize the win wins, you know, that's the essence of um, habit number uh, four, which is think win win. So I'm going to clear the drawings. Let's go on and sort of see a little bit more about this habit. All right. So think win win. This is the habit of mutual benefit. Right. And we're moving from independence up into the um, public victory, right? Habit number four, think win-win. And one way to think about this is that um, think win-win is the attitude you take into a relationship. So we would talk with um, Lucas and Jack about, you know, developing an attitude of thinking win-win. We then teach them a little bit about the skill. And the skill is habit five, seek first to understand, then be understood. And then the result that we'd want to get is going to be, you know, the synergize. That's the result. And that shows up in habit number six. So that's how that, that public victory triangle works on the top, right? And just remember, this doesn't forget about the stuff that we did in the private victory. It's all based on those roots, right? The foundation of character. So the principle in habit number four, mutual benefit, fairness, and abundance. Here's the common paradigm. There's only so much, and the more you get, the less there is for me. Then the highly effective paradigm, there's plenty out there for everyone and more to spare. I call this the bigger pie paradigm, right? Common practices, we compete, we threaten, we're insensitive to the needs of others. We consider only our own needs, we're selfish, and we expect either win or lose. So the highly effective uh, practices we wanna incorporate is having an abundance mentality. We wanna balance courage and consideration. And we want to consider other people's wins as well as our own. And ultimately, we're going to be creating win-win agreements. Okay, so as is all for all our habits, so habit number four, take a look at your um, habit assessment score. Go ahead and record those um, in your workbook. And I think... Um, Will, did we get this as part of, added as an assignment, you know, going forward? So for habit four, we're also recording these on Canvas. Is that part of an assignment now? Uh, yeah, there've been assignments up and I think um, there have been some added that I didn't make, but um, they should be good for the rest of the quarter. Okay, okay. So yeah, so, so make sure you do this, not only in your workbook, but I think we also got it in there. So you're gonna record your assessment score and think about you know, some areas that you might wanna focus on or improve on um, based on the responses you got from your uh, benchmark score. And remember on those benchmarks, uh, the assessment benchmarks, you might wanna recheck those sort of periodically if you've got some people outstanding who haven't responded yet. So your um, sample size might go up a little bit um, over time. Okay. All right. So, um, so here's some of the, the combinations. There's win, lose, right? I win, you lose. There's lose, win. Oh, you know, you can win. It's okay. You know, I, I don't need to win. You can, you can have your way. I give up once again. There's lose, lose. You know, I don't care if you, um, um, you know, uh, I just don't want you to win, right? I don't care if I lose, I just don't want anybody to win. 
and there's win, right? And win is just, you know, I just win no matter what, right? Regardless of, of where you uh, you come out on things. So those are some of the, the things that you go for. Ultimately, what we want to go for is we want to go for win-win or even higher than win-win is win-win or no deal. Okay, and we'll take a look at what that looks like here. Let's uh, let's watch this video on win-win thinking. Now, much of the world is win-lose. Competitive athletics, competition in the marketplace, you think competitively. So it has its proper place. But if you're dealing with interdependency, if you're dealing with teamwork, if you're dealing with where you need to be cooperative, you've got to think win-win. Most people see life like a piece of pie. There's only so much. So that if you get a hunk of it that's bigger, that means I have less. If you get more profit, I have less. If you get the recognition, I don't get it. See, that's called the concept of scarcity. Abundance is where you see the pie getting larger and larger and larger. When you get the win-win spirit, the win-win attitude, and learn the skills of win-win, which are associated with habits four, five, and six, what happens is you start to discover pragmatically for yourself the pie does get larger. Most people grow up with a comparison-based identity because they were compared in their own childhood, then in school, then in athletics, in almost every dimension of life. We live with comparisons, and we learn the values of those. Those are scripts. That's actually scripting. The ability to re-script yourself is a unique capacity animals do not possess. And any person at any time in their life, regardless of how deep those scripts are, it's tough. It's not easy. It takes patience, persistence, and courage. But they can reinvent themselves. You want to come up and help me a minute? <laughs> I, Ron, have never lost an arm wrestle. And I don't intend to now. <laughs> You're either going to be down there or I'm going to be down there. If he puts me down here, he gets the dime, okay? And if I put you down here, that means you give me the dime. Fair enough? You tell us when to start, give us 15 seconds. All right? Now, if he happens to put me down twice, he gets two dimes. <laughs> so keep track of how many times he puts me down before I put him down. OK. Give each other the intimidating stare. <laughs> the essence of win-win from an emotional standpoint is that you are sufficiently independent emotionally that you can be both kind and courageous at the same time. That's the essence of maturity. You can be kind Now, much of the world is win-lose. Competitive athletics, competition in the marketplace, you think competitively. So it has its proper place. But if you're dealing so with inter- I'm sorry, I just kind of need to get past this. I uh, accidentally hit the button here. Here we go, back after this. From an emotional standpoint, is that you are sufficiently independent emotionally, that you can be both kind and courageous at the same time. That's the essence of maturity. You can be kind, but if you lack courage, you're going to go for lose-win. You'll capitulate. You'll give in. You'll be permissive and soft. People will exploit you, run all over you, take advantage of you. Or let's say that you're full of yourself, how right you are. You're courageous. You're firm. You're strong. But you lack any empathy, any consideration 
any kindness for others. So you push for win-lose. I had this guy come to me and he said, Stephen, I really tried to practice what you were teaching. And I'm telling you, they took me to the cleaners. It just did not work. I said, well, why didn't you go for Liz Wynn? He said, I didn't. I went for Win Win. I thought you said they took you to the cleaners. Yeah, they did. In other words, you lost and they won. What's that called? He thought for a moment, and all of a sudden, like lights came on. Lose win, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to really pay a greater price to learn this. Okay, bigger pie habit, right? Think win win. Um, this is the abundance, you know, mentality you want to get. I really love that, you know, that little example of, you know, uh, you lost and they won. What's that called? right? Lose, win, right? And I think in so many situations, you know, trying to be nice, we go for that. It also helps me, or I reflect back to the interview with Peen, sort of talking about going into that that bigger stage of sort of that bigger wafer fab in Singapore and, you know, um, being sort of tested by the organization, right? Are you going to be a, a lose, win kind of person? Are you going to be that nice manager that just sort of gives away? Or are you going to hold fast and balance that courage and consideration right for um for moving forward okay so let's get somebody to read this here a win-win is a frame of mind and heart that constantly seeks mutual benefit in all human interactions win-win is based on the paradigm that there is plenty for everybody that one person's success is not achieved at the expense of others hey stephen r covey asher thank you for that deposit right it's easy. It's easy. It's a little kindness, right? So that was the effective practice of having an abundance mentality, right? So a little bit of practice. So you've got some questions on page uh, 98 and 99 in your workbook that are replicated on Canvas. So I'll let you go ahead and, go ahead and do that, right? Now we're going to talk about balancing courage and consideration. And what does that look like? All right, so let's get somebody else to make a deposit and read this for us. Willingness and ability to speak your thoughts and feelings respectfully. Yeah, courage. That's what courage is in the seven habits. Yep. And consideration, Paul, why don't you go ahead and read this too? All right, I got you. Uh, consideration, willingness and ability to seek and listen to others' thoughts and feelings with respect. All right, so respectful listening. So that's the consideration part, all right? So there's um, another exercise on page 101 on balancing courage and consideration. So you can see the exercise. You can read through the notes and instructions on what you're going to do. Make sure you understand the instructions on Canvas. So you can click over that and see what that looks like. We're going to go ahead and move on for now. So. Um, what you want to do too in this other thing is sort of think of some strategies for courage and consideration, right? And so um, there are situations where you're in where you know maybe you can increase your courage, maybe some places, and you know maybe this is in discussions with your parents where you got to maybe speak your mind a little bit more. And then there might be other situations where you need to um, increase your consideration. And you want to figure out what those particular strategies, you know, might be for where you might, um, you know, build those two habits and capabilities. All right. So considering other people's wins as well as your own is another highly effective practice. So let's take a look at this video of the Royal Ballet School and um, see what this looks like for them. The Royal Ballet is the national company of the UK. It really is in those sort of top five companies of the world. We have an amazing array of principal dancers from across the globe. There's many, many young uh, people that want to be uh, a, a classical ballet dancer, but there's only very few that actually really have all the attributes. 
Well, it's everyone's dream to be a principal at the Royal Ballet. And of course, it's mine too. The thing we're looking for in a student is that sense of that they can contribute to their own training. They can't be a passive receptacle. They need to be somebody that's actively involved in what they're doing. So what we can bring to that process for the students is the guidance in doing that. The Royal Ballet School was my dream school because it leads into the best company in the world. We provide the students an opportunity to uh, achieve their dream. It's a very difficult path for most of them to get here. And through producing the talent that we produce, we're able to supply the major companies and the Royal Ballet with some of the best talent in the world. We have our reputation, they have a career. My name is Eitor Galende. I'm from Spain. Many people applied for Royal Ballet School because it's one of the best schools in the world. So when I was accepted on the final audition, I was really sad because I knew that I couldn't go to, to the school. Ator's father is a bus driver. They have no money, and he couldn't possibly expect his parents to pay for this. So I had to send an email to the school saying that I couldn't go. He actually wrote back to us to say that he wouldn't be able to come, not realizing that we'd given him a scholarship. When our finance director was able to convince him that he had a scholarship, he was over the moon. I started to shout and scream and, and dance in and my, you know, it, it's absolutely my dream come true. Our students come from all over the world, and if they've got the talent to come here, we find the money to help them achieve that dream. The Royal Ballet School and the Royal Ballet Company are absolutely linked. We have various styles of dancing that we want the Royal Ballet School to teach so that the pupils can come over to our company and really work in that style. So when we moved here, we put in the Bridge of Aspiration, which allowed the students of the Royal Ballet to be able to observe the Royal Ballet dancers in rehearsal and performance. It's just very symbolic of the door is open, this is your way to the next part of your career. Being here in Royal Ballet School and having the Royal Opera House next door, you can see them rehearsing, so you can say, all right, I want to be there. That would be my dream came true, because I love that company. The students have the opportunity to work with the company, especially the Royal Ballet, so they're getting the experience. Then if they have that opportunity to be offered a contract, um, obviously, the school will excel from the employment and it gives the student the confidence to think, well, it's the starting of their career, but the success is there, so it has a knock-on effect. One of the key things that a dancer has to do is to be a team player because you can't always be the star. You have to always support everybody in there. You've got the technical team you have to support. You've got the wardrobe team you have to support. So it's not only actually being able to work with other dancers, it's also about working with them in terms of their discipline and communication within a, uh, a company situation. As a dancer, you constantly want to impress and you want people to want you, basically. So I think that you have to be competitive in life but not to the point where you don't socialize with any other dancers. The Royal Ballet School always made us very humble and friendly towards each other. We always kept a very positive environment. There's no guarantees that any one student coming into the school is going to make it through to the end of the course, let alone in the, into the profession. However, we are very proud of our record in the last seven years of having a 100% employment rate for our graduates. And um, that's not something that every school can boast, and certainly in these economic times. The Royal Ballet School really has strong principles, and they really want to develop and create the best dancers to touch everyone around the world. It's the sense of the ongoing tradition that we're actually being able to pass on to the next generation uh, what we have learned in the profession, our love for the profession, and try to instill that in them and try to ensure that this is going to survive for the future. I think it's very important that we still have something in our world where it is a tradition that we can pass on and enjoy, and by giving to others, we get something back ourselves. The school gave me the opportunity to live my dream. So now it's me who has to give them back by working really hard and maybe get a place in a good company. The Royal Ballet School is about excellence. That's what we live for.
but the excellence is only achieved through what we can do for a young person and what they can do for us to help make them the best that they can be. That way, we all win and we achieve our excellence. Okay, win-win. And, you know, this is a, you know, you know watching this, and I've, I've watched this movie uh, or this video, you know, certainly multiple times, but, you know, seeing the different ways that a, a win-win sort of culture and attitude can permeate, you know, not only your individual life, the individual dancers sort of understanding that, you know, they, they you know, they need to excel, but they can't excel without, everybody excelling or the others, but also then see manifested at a you know larger organization and sort of a two organization um, structure like the, the Royal Ballet and the Royal Ballet School. All right, so um, there's some uh, ways that you can start to you know build up this this habit or the skill um, and, and the skill you need to sort of do that. So thinking about like what other people's wins are in different sort of scenarios, and we've got some scenarios you can um, you can practice on on page 104, and then ultimately what you're trying to do is create some win-win agreements. And so um, let's go ahead and have somebody um, read this. Let's go ahead and um, go to uh, Joseph. Can you make a deposit for me and read this? Yeah. Yes. Win-win agreement, a formal or informal structure to clarify and manage expectations between people as a result of thinking win-win. Okay. So let's see, take a look and see. Thank you for that, Joseph. That was a great deposit. Um, so there's um, some win-win agreements examples. Once you know what you know, both sides' wins are, you know, you create an agreement on the bottom. Um, there's actually that uh, uh, um, results delegation is an example of a way, another way to structure a win-win agreement, kind of going through. So if you look at that um, uh, document that I wrote up for doing your My 7 Habits notebook, that's another way to, um, you know, structure an agreement, right? And so there's some exercises here in your workbook and on Canvas, where you're going to be asked to do that. And we're going to end the class tonight with this little uh, video, Green and Clean. This is a classic. This is my favorite video of the whole um, series that we have in the Seven Habits. So we'll go ahead and wrap up. I will hang around a little bit sort of afterwards, but um, here you go. My little son agreed in a family meeting to take care of the art. I will, Dad. Son? Your job is green and clean. Let me show you what green looks like, son. Let's go over to our neighbor's house. <laughs> That's the color we're after, son. <laughs> clean means let's clean up half of it. Now notice that compared to that. That's green and clean, son. Your job is green and clean. Now, son, how you do that is up to you. I'd tell her how I do it if you want. How'd you do it, Dad? I turn on the sprinklers. <laughs> but you may want to use buckets or hose or spit all day long. <laughs> all we care about is what, son? Green and clean. What's green look like? Good. What's clean? Good. It's your job, son. Guess who your boss is, son? Who? You boss yourself. Guess who your helper is? Who? I am. You boss me. I do? But if I ever have any time, you need help. You just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. And guess who judges you, son? That's right, you judge yourself. How do you think you judge yourself, son? Green and clean. What's green now? What's clean now? Good. Is that a deal, son? You think about it for a day or two. Saturday. How do you feel, son? I'll do it. Do what? Green and clean. How? It's up to me. Who's your boss? I boss myself. Who judges you? I judge myself. How do you judge yourself? Green and clean. What's green? Good. Clean? Good. Who's your helper? You are if you have time. What if I don't have time? I gotta do green and clean. Is that a deal, son? Deal. Deal was made. You did nothing.
Nothing all that Saturday. All that Sunday. Monday. It's Tuesday morning. Going to work. Hot. Summer day. Burning up. Yellowing. Neighbor's yard. Green and clean. Manicured. Garbage strewn right down the side lawn from a Saturday night barbecue. Falling out the bottom of the sack. Three feet from my car. I could rationalize a little away Saturday and Sunday. But Monday, this is inexcusable. I was ready to move to win-lose. <laughs> now, son, you get out there. You get over here. Or I'm telling... But the moment you do, you kill the goose. You kill effectiveness. You go for efficiency. Yeah, he'll clean that up. And what happens tomorrow when you're not there? <sighs> Bite your tongue. Reaffirm your purpose. Raise boys, not grass. <laughs> I'll see what it looks like tonight. Could hardly wait to get home. Driving, going around the corner, there where my yard was. Tuesday afternoon, more cluttered, more yellow than ever. My son across the street, playing ball. I was burning. We'd agree that we'd walk around the yard twice a week, and he'd show me how it's going. Hi, son. How you doing? Just fine, Dad. I was faking it totally. <laughs> How's it going in the yard, son? Just fine, Dad. I bit my tongue. After dinner, why don't we walk around? You can show me how it's going. Before we got to the door, you could see his lip. <laughs> By the time we got out of the front yard, just open bawling. So hard. I mean, what was hard? He hadn't done one single thing. <laughs> I'll tell you what hard is, is moving up the level of initiative. You cannot hold people responsible for results if you supervise their methods. Anything you want me to do to help, son? Would you? What was our agreement? So you'd help me if you had time. I've got time. You do? I'll be right back. Ran in the house, came out with two sacks. He handed me one, he took one. That's when he signed the win-win agreement. And the old one, he asked for help a couple more times that entire summer. It's his job. It takes time to set up the agreement and to reaffirm it. The tendency is to backslide on it when you see mistakes. Keep believing in the people. Holding them accountable in the way agreed. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. That's it for tonight. Thank you for hanging out. A little bit over three minutes. Um, if you need to escape from this class, just turn on your video, wave bye. That would be a deposit for me now that we know about the emotional bank account. Turning on your video and waving hi is a deposit. I have to find out what deposits are for you guys, but uh, there you go. All right, um, we'll talk a little bit more about that video. Uh, that is Googleable, so you can type in um, clean and green and see what you come up with from Google. There's probably a video or two out there, but uh, I enjoy being in class with you tonight and learning about win-win agreements. So we'll see you next Tuesday.